All right, Eli, we're here today to talk about our SM9 fitting we got a couple weeks ago. And going into it, if we can be honest for a second, can we be honest? Lenny Cuit, honesty music. Confession, do we, confession music? We might need confession music. Let's just confession music. If you were to have asked us going into this, how important wedge fitting was. What would you have said? I would have said it's a nice to have, but it's not really that important. Yeah. Is what, is what I would have said. It definitely fall. I would have said definitely falls below driver and iron. And I would have said, I'll, I'll probably pick up something, but nothing, nothing that incredible where I, I would look back and say, you have to go get fit for a wedge. Driver irons wedges like mm -hmm. that. I, I just didn't think it would compare. Yeah. Um, and we were just really, really wrong. Yeah. Um, we're idiots. That's been documented. It's been well documented. <laughs> just add this to the list. So we're going to show you today why we were so wrong, because this is legitimately one of the best fitting experiences that we've ever had. Oh, yeah. I learned so much. So yeah. Lenny Cuit. So there we were at Sugarloaf in Atlanta, getting ready for our wedge fitting, filled with wrong opinions about wedge fittings that we just confessed to, watching, judging, look at the baby, look at the baby. And then we met the man who would show us how wrong we were, our fitter, John, who had incredible movie line knowledge, by the way. Kudos to you, John. So we met John, we warmed up, we hit a few swish swish, and then we get into part one of the fitting, Gap. Let's see what we got. So the first thing is just kind of going through our current setup. So what? talk to me about each one of these wedges, how we use them. And John started with each of us the same way, taking our existing wedges, laying them out, asking us how we used each club. He then had us start hitting shots on TrackMan with each wedge, and he was looking for a gap of 10 to 15 yards between each club. For me, my gapping was right on target with my current loft structure. So John then focused on optimizing my ball flight by moving the launch angle down and the spin rate up. What do you like to see on, as far as like spin rate? This first shot he hit, that's awesome. We'd love to see, you know, as much, basically as much as we can in his situation. I'd like to see that a little lower. I don't like seeing that much above 30. We can, but it depends on how you build the club. You're currently playing the 12. Yeah. So we're gonna give you SM9. SM9, hopefully the technology will also Maybe bring your ball flight down a little bit more because okay. it's a little high on the launch, right? So if right. we get lower flight, a little more spin, give you a little bit more control. Good. I mean, you got 107.9 versus 105. I mean, pretty close, right? Yeah. But look at the difference in spin. So, sorry, the top line here is what's in your hand. Wow. The middle line is yours. So launch went from 30 down to 27.9, right? Spin went from 7,400 to, to almost 11. 11 wow. Uh, 100. Sorry, 11,000. So, um, then height, 84 feet, got down to 76 feet, right? Landing angle from 52 down to 50. Mm. So it's just a more consistent strike, a more consistent kind of towards, right? It's going to hold the green a little bit better. Now that we've kind of found that, let's let you hit the eight degree bounce, okay? Right. And we'll kind of see which one feels better to you between All the right. two. So we're going to keep the same specs. The only thing we're changing is bounce. Okay. It digs in there too much, as you guys know, the ball's going to slide up the base, launch higher with less spin. Right. But. Let's see what this does. We're just looking for that optimal contact point, you know, kind of between groups two and five. Okay, really good swing. What'd you notice right away? Yeah. Straight up. <laughs> you felt like you swung in much different, yeah. right? Yeah. It felt the same, and then I just looked in it. Was, yeah. yeah. So you had less spin, and the launch went up almost two degrees. Now, you hit it good, yeah. but it wasn't as efficient in the sound, right? Yeah. It wasn't that thuddier, it sounded clickier yeah. going through the turf. Yeah. And one more for fun, but that's that's pretty much textbook example between the two. So basically what you just saw there, the SM9's raised center of gravity on the higher loft wedges combined with a shaft adjustment John made, had me launching it lower with more spin. And then for optimal contact, it was clear, my steeper swing benefits dramatically from more bounce. Eli, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. But I'm a big, I'm a big brusher, like you can tell. Oh yeah, you, you were would, kidding about uh, <laughs> positive attack angle. You would have no idea that I was over here hitting. 
I'm Divots. A, I'm he's, a huge Earth guy. I like to protect the Earth. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. We're going to stamp Earth Day on one. He's big, big Arbor Day. Divots big on another big Ar Arbor, Arbor Day guy. Arbor Day is a really big deal in our house. <laughs> I play a top. I play a forehand lob. That's what I play. We get a lot. We call him the doll. Uh, but you know what? Look how much you're hitting up, and you still got that kind of launch and yeah. spin. That's not bad. As was well documented last season, Eli traditionally boasts an upward attack angle on his irons, and that was no different on this day. You could see some self consciousness coming out from Eli, so I asked him the other day while we were recording if this got in his head at all during the fitting. So. At this point, you see, you see your attack angle, and you see that you're hitting up on the Lots ball. You make your N N Nadal joke. Um, are you? How much in the in the moment are you thinking about changing your swing, or did John just with with him basically saying, "Hey, your numbers are still good"? Like, uh, did you just accept it and move on? Well, I think. <clears throat> I mean, the, a good, I think a good fitter will do this. Like, he got me out of my own head really quick. Yeah. Um, I think I think his affirmation that, hey, you, you, you can hit a good shot and still be a sweeper, uh, was that was helpful. Because I, I will say there was about a two-second – if you would have went in my head, if you would have went inside the numbers with, <laughs> with, uh, with Sean Salisbury um, – <laughs> <laughs> I think you would have I think you would have seen me with like 14 different swing planes where I was like how do I change my swing plane quickly to get a negative <laughs> attack angle it would have been bad it would have been beautiful mind music so thanks to John Eli was not worried about changing his swing and they went to work gapping out his wedges it's really good I'm kind of looking I mean as long as he's kind of around like 130 yeah that's what we want to see here Go a little left. There's that line. Yep. Let's tweak it just a hair. Take it a touch flatter. Let's give you, you got a lot of speed, right? A lot mm -hmm. of fast tempo. So a little more shaft weight can help, right? Okay. Your old one's 125, uh -huh. all right? This was a little bit heavier than that, close to like 130. So I'm gonna give you just a little bit more weight just to see what that does. He's so strong, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> that JV wrestling. <laughs> it's Irish Mike. Irish Mike, that's on you. Good job, It's Irish not on Mike. me. I feel like you're almost hitting like a 75% swing shot here. I'm gonna okay. see what that does. Mmm. Go. Good tempo. Exactly. You still hit it just as far. He's just getting quick. It's a yeah. wedge. Yeah. You're not trying to hit it as far as possible. Yeah. Right? Trying to hit a number. So for you, because you have a lot of speed, like we talked about, 75% swings. Then we'll take, you know, take the next wedge up or down, yeah. depending on that. So that's how you want to do it. So last swing, right? Yeah. 75%. He hit the farthest shot yet. Mm. Okay. So with a wedge, tempo is everything. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's a Ryan. It's a Ryan. Yeah. It's a Ryan. Exactly. There we go. 142, 132, 119. Mm, love it. So that's a little different loft than you've been playing. Okay. That's a 52 at 53. So. Explain that. 52 at 53. Yeah, so we bent the we bent the wedge one degree weak, right? So we took a 52 and then we made it one degree weak on the loft. So now your loft structure goes 43 degree pitching wedge, 48 degree wedge, 53 degree wedge, 58 degree wedge, five degree increments. Mm. You're special. Wow. Mom. It's a little different for you. Mom was right. <laughs> you swing so fast. So they have to mom. bend they have to bend the clubs <laughs> now, just to fit your speed. We've got our gapping soft, but also, remember I talked about you said I'm not the best green side chipper, whatever. Yeah. Great. Give you another wedge, it's gonna help you now. Now with both of us gapped and flighted, we headed greenside to see how the bounce and grind options would perform on pitches and chips from different lies. John had us hit our wedges from soft grabby lies, firm lies, sand, a flop shot from a super tight lie, all to see what bounce and grind combination could handle all of the lies for us. This is the part we really missed in San Diego when we got monsoon now. For me, we started off in the soft stuff, and John started me out with two degrees less bounce than I was used to. Watch this. 
out of there. <laughs> Using the backstop. I, I like the uh, creativity. It's contour game. Oh, okay. It's okay. There you go. There's your soft, grabby that was really situation. Grabby. All right. We're working really hard. <laughs> yes, we are. Let's try this one. Hmm. Watch this. Oh, yeah. That's right good. away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right away. I don't think you magically got a different swing. Not a boy. What's mm. easier? <laughs> this one. <laughs> okay. So there, there we go. Obviously, cool. again, softer conditions and stuff like that. We have a steeper delivery like we talked about. Yeah. This was number one, which was the D grind, D -grind. right? 12 degrees of effective bounce. This is your old friend, the F, the, the 14. F, yeah. Okay. We're still on them. All right. So, okay. This time, we're going to start hitting some 60s. Just okay. like we did, we're going to try some different ones out. A lot more grinds as we get up into the 60s because, you know, we're doing a lot more green side with them, so that's why we have more options. Yeah. Okay, good. Awesome. I like that one. Okay. <laughs> All right. Number one was pretty good. All right, now you hit the first one good, but you notice the sound was a little bit different that on that one, right? Good. It sounded a little better. It came out just a little lower. Yeah, yeah. a lot lower. Ooh, ooh. Pretty saucy there. Yeah. Okay. I ended up down to two options, the eight degree M grind I use now and the 10 degree S grind. And the 10 degree S grind actually performed better for sand and flop shots. So that one out. But while we're looking at these shots, I'll mention that the other eye popping thing while we were going through this, I'm not sure if you can see it. These are 25 yard wedge shots that are backing up. The fresh grooves difference was amazing. And Eli and I talked about that the other day as well. New grooves is a oh real thing. Like I, I honestly just didn't think like I heard people say, yeah, well, you get you get 75 rounds and you have to change your wet change your wedges and I don't know like I don't I just I I guess I didn't buy it. Yeah. I, like I just didn't think it was that big of a deal. I thought there was something superior in the technique of it's the pros. Huge, it's a huge freaking deal. <laughs> yeah. It was giant. And actually my favorite part, Lenny, if you want to cue my favorite part, my favorite part was when you told john that you don't get any spin and he kind of took he kind of took uh issue with it he was offended john i'm sorry no no spin i just am so i have a really hard time getting any spin on the ball okay everybody can spin the ball with a little technique fresh grooves on a well-fit wedge and a premium urethane golf ball like premium ones yeah. Golf will spin. Not something's wrong somewhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's, I hear that all the time. I don't spin the ball. Yeah. You will. Yeah. Because we just got to get the right stuff in your hands. I thought you didn't get any spin. There you go. Saucy. Love it. I said it could spin the ball. Yep. Good. Get in. In. That had so much spin. Yeah, that's good. That hit the change. that yeah. hit the down. Well fit wedge, good golf ball, all spin. That, that is a lot of spin. That hit the down slope. I thought that was gone. <laughs> so throughout this process, Eli found out that he can spin the ball, and he also found out he was a better fit for the 12 degree D grind than his current 14 degree K grind. At the end of it all, not only were we blown away by how good the experience was. We walked away knowing we just got better, and I can't wait to use these clubs. Kudos to you, Titleist. Kudos to you, John. Let's go, let's go. I feel so exposed right here. Shut my club face down. <laughs> I feel like that face is just a little more open, right? Okay. Keep that weight about 70% more on the front side. 
Okay, good. Mm -hmm. All right, now I feel like that club is coming out more towards me, not so far inside. Yep, good. There it is. There it is. Okay. That's it. That's it. It's down and through. Whoa! Come on, baby. That'll be fifty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> And he fixed your uh, he fixed your sand game in one shot. Did you pay him yet? Uh, I, I don't think I've. He, does he take Bitcoin? Uh, <laughs> shrimp bucks? Hey, fortune fortune favors the brave. <laughs> Matt Damon. You John, get on get on crypto.com and pay John. Pay John his pay John his Bitcoin. Matt Damon will be there with a blank check for me. Just just write on it whatever you think you're deserving of. <laughs> Fortune favors the brave. That's so good. We need to use that more often. Oh, gosh. It's okay. Gosh, that was awful. You're really bad. <laughs> that one was really Senior good. See your wedge shot. It's good to have that every now and then. <laughs> I play a lot. We play a lot in West Texas. Yeah. <laughs> He's got an unfinished look. <laughs> it was Midland, ain't it? It was no, Odessa. It's Odessa. Honey, I'm from Odessa. <laughs> it's Odessa. Okay? It I was, was born there, honey. Od I was in Odessa. Can we talk about John and the twins quote? I mean, slow down. Let not, the blood like, flow it, 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 through the fingers. fingers. Is that from Twins? Yes! Twins. No one's ever caught that one. Yeah, well Good done. Good job, man. <laughs> I said, I said, by my feet. <laughs> by my on feet. my feet. It was I freaking mean, it was, incredible. It was pretty what, good. Give me the probability. What probability did you think there you would have tied to that of him having any clue about that line? Let the blood flow through the fingers. I've said it many times in my <laughs> life. Uh, like it was, it was something me and my dad always said, uh, and no one has ever caught it. I had no idea. I was clueless. No one has ever caught it. So, John, um, kudos to you, my friend. Way to, you, way to watch twins growing up. Did you play uh, baseball? Uh, no. Okay. Not I was really. just curious of like how, you know, how you got to go. Sometimes other sports can lead into our tendencies in golf, so I was just curious. He was really not good at baseball. <laughs> yeah, you think he's this at golf. He was really bad at baseball. He was the worst. Fair enough. He kept picking up on the on the grounders. He wouldn't stay down. He had an upward attack angle with the glove. <laughs> he was a great line drop slap here. I was, I was the predated feature. Mmm. Mmm. That's for the kids right there. Go in. You did that for Northeast Ohio. That's for Northeast Ohio. <laughs>See how it's just sliding right through that yeah. stuff? Yeah. So do you feel like you're losing anything compared to your old one? Does it feel like it's easier off the tight lie? Does it feel like it's, you know, sitting okay? Uh, any feedback? I'd say the only difference is I, I, I noticed a little bit more bounce. Okay. Um, so on like on this shot, I think I probably, like on a really tight lie, uh -huh. I think I might be at least because, initially more Because of the looks of it? The way it sits, yeah. or, or okay, it all right, the way it sits. okay. But I, I, I can get over that quickly if I do that. Uh, yeah, results <laughs> is self-explanatory. Yeah. But for fun, there's there's your old, you know, basically your old grind. Let's see what this does. All right. Mm. Which one's better? We'll take that one. <laughs>